First, I want to say hello, everybody. This is my new channel where I will be focused on tutorials, expired and current film reviews, camera reviews, and much, much more. Today's video will focus on the reason and process I use to make guardrails for my 616 folding camera. To get started, here are some examples of 6x9 images compared to the panoramic images my modified camera shoots. The panoramic image allows me to get more details and a wider shot. One downside, however, is that while 6x9 images fit neatly into their 120 sleeves altogether, you can see that you can only fit 4 images per sleeve. This leaves a portion of the sleeve empty, which you can either cut off or leave alone. For my personal taste, I just leave it alone. The function of these guardrails is to help keep the film flat against the camera back. If you don't add them, there's a good chance that your film will twist or bend, which then makes getting a proper distance reading pointless. The original 616 film was developed to go over the original guardrails, hence why you need to build your own. Now to make the guardrails, you're going to need a couple of things. Most of them are pretty cheap, so this won't be an expensive project. For this project, you're going to need double-sided tape, metallic tape, four pieces of wood sharpened to two specific lengths, and a sharpened pocket knife or razor blade. You're also going to need adapters. The adapters I use come from Camera Hack, called FAK616. These adapters have proven to be very reliable and come in a nice package which includes information, links, and a list of compatible 616 cameras. It's important to note that I didn't buy mine from their store, but I did buy it from Film Photography Project. I will provide a link to both of these in the description. You're also going to need a 616 camera. However, what type of 616 camera is very important. I've noticed that with many 616 cameras, even ones the 616 adapters are supposed to work with are have trouble. The camera I used is called a 616 Kodak Model C. It's gotten harder to find lately, but if you find one, you really need to get it. This is the only 616 folding camera I've used that works smoothly with the 120 spool adapters. One of the reasons I think it works is because this particular model has a small nub underneath the take-up area, which none of the others have. This helps stabilize the roll from the beginning, which I believe makes using the camera much, much easier. As a quick demonstration, the frame you're going to want to have is going to look a lot like this once it's done, with a few changes, of course. One benefit to the guardrails that I've made is that it keeps the sides and the edges of the images you take on it flat and sharp. If you don't have the sidebars on, the sides of the images will be blurry and without much definition. With all that being said, let's begin. The first step to making the mask is to lightly, and I mean lightly, sand the tops, bottoms, sides, and edges of the wooden pieces. For this demonstration, I used the nail filer. The reason for doing this is so that when the tape goes over it, there are no bumps that could show up when the tape is pressed down, which could affect the image. Your main goal here is to get everything as smooth as possible. Once you're done with that, you're going to take the newly sanded wooden pieces and dip them into water. Now, I don't think this is necessary really, but it makes me feel better, and I think it gets off a lot of the excess wood dust that may linger. I don't know, I'm just crazy like that. But um, once you finish that, you're going to want to dry them with a piece of cloth. For this example, I'm using an old shirt. After you've dried them off, the fun part begins. It's time for tape. This, however, is where it gets a little complicated, but I'll try and walk you through it. First, you're going to want to cut the tape so that there is a little bit of excess tape on either side. Then, you're going to cut that piece in half because it's so shiny and I'm so blind, I cut it in a pattern so I know which side is the straight side, like so. Now once you've cut them in two, put one aside and grab one of the new sanded guardrails. It's important to remember that when you're using metallic tape like this, you try to use your fingers to keep it open once the backing paper is taken off. Otherwise you run the risk of the tape spiraling and catching on itself. And because it's metallic tape, it's a whole new level of un... God, I don't even know. 
It's just a whole new level of not being able to unstick it from itself. Now once you've done that, you're going to try as best as you can to match the flat side of the tape with the edge of the top wooden piece as best you can. These next steps are honestly some of the most complicated parts. When pressing the tape on the wood, I find it works better when you start in the middle and push down outwards. Kind of like origami. Once you have it flattened on the rail, you're going to want to try and fit the rail exactly underneath where the 616 rail is. This is an extremely delicate process, so take your time with it. Once you got a position right, you're going to want to press the tape down on the 616 guardrails and around it, but be careful you don't tape the rollers on either side. Once that's done, you're going to take your pocket knife and cut around the edges. Make sure, I cannot stress this enough, make sure that what you're cutting it with is extremely sharp. This will hold the new railing in place. And once that's done, all you have to do now is repeat the process for the bottom rail. Once that's done, it should look something like this. Now, at this point, you could leave it alone, and your film will glide across the new guardrails completely smoothly. Um, this just, the whole point of the guardrails is that it allows your film to stay completely flat when exposed. Because if you don't have it in there, it's just going to completely mess up and sometimes the spool goes crazy and then it's just a whole mess. Now the next part is important to me because I've noticed that without the side rails you can get fuzzy sides on your negatives and it can also lead to light leaks. The goal of these side rails is to prevent light from bending so you have a near perfect panoramic image where sides and corners are all well defined. Now, for the other guardrails, you're going to want to follow the same process you did with the other ones, except you're going to want to cut the tape after you pushed it on. This will leave you with something like this that should fit in basically like that. Now for the final steps. Again, I'm not saying you have to do this, but it's what I did. So first, you're going to bend the new guardrails up like this, then, you're going to take your double-sided tape and place it on the sides so it looks like this. Then, you're going to cut off the excess tape. Once the tape is on, push the top and bottom guardrails down like so. Apply pressure on the edges very gently, especially on the middle parts. This helps it stay in place as well. simply snap the side parts like so and you're basically done. Once you completed the finished product it should look something like this. Smooth, flat, and well defined. If you've messed up any of the steps you can indeed remove the tape but be very gentle when doing so. These cameras are old and most of the guardrails are not that strong, especially this one in particular. Once the guardrails are in, you should be able to plug in the 616 adapters to your spools like so. Again, the focus here is to make sure that the film is pressed flat against the backing plate of the camera. finally develop your images, they should look something kind of like this. Notice how defined the image is? For me, this makes it a lot easier to scan and to print from. Well, that's everything. I mainly made this video because I've seen other 616 to 120 videos on YouTube and they usually show the modified guardrails on the cameras that they run the spools through. But they never really show you how they made them or link you to a video of how you make them. Which 
can get pretty frustrating. But um, that's another, again, another reason I decided to make a video. But anyways, here is a short demonstration of the images I was able to take with my 616 camera with the added guardrails on the top, bottom, left, and right. Thank you. 